Hello and welcome to the second edition of Artist at Work. Today we're in Patong and we're going to talk to a man called Les Martin. Now Les works at the moment at the Holiday Inn, he's a singer-entertainer and he's been here for quite a while and he intends to stay here for a lot longer. So let's go and talk to him, shall we? There's his office. Uh, he also lives here. Let's see if he's in. Oh, hi, Les. Hi. Oh, you're not in. <laughs> hi, I'm Tony. Hi, Tony. I'm fine. This is my film crew. Oh, you're not selling timeshare then? I'm not, not selling timeshare now. And I've cleaned my shoes. Okay, is it okay coming? Absolutely. Thank you very much. Les, it's very nice of you to let us into your apartment and to uh, let us rummage about like this. You're welcome. So, would it be okay to um, ask you a few questions and maybe sit down? Yes, yeah, sit down, as long as you don't do too much rummaging, though. Okay. Right, I'll try not to. No problem. Okay, come and sit down. Thank you. I've got sunshine. I'm very comfortable. Thank you. Are you comfortable? Thank you, Les, for letting us delve into your uh, your past and all of your secrets, of course. Now, your real name is actually um, Martin Berry, is that right? That's right, yes, Martin Berry. Les comes from my father's name, Les Martin, uh, stage name. Right, OK. So it'd be OK for me to call you Martin? Whatever, Martin or Les, it doesn't matter. Sir? Well, that, maybe that'll come in the future, but I'll wait. OK, thank you. Thanks ever so much. So, um, Phuket. Why Phuket? Uh, it was a holiday thing, you know, like a lot of people who come and, uh, and live here and uh, they come here first on holiday. And I did that about six, seven years ago. Uh, really liked it. Uh, my job had finished in England. I'd been made redundant after working for a, a company for a long, long time. And on the recommendation of a lady I worked with, uh, she said, go to Phuket. I was going to go to Spain. Uh, she said, go to Phuket for something different, which I did. Uh, Liked it here, went back to the UK and did a little bit of work there, came back here again and decided to uh, to live here and make my living and uh, do that by being an entertainer, which I... So, you, uh, you worked in England, so how did you get into the, um, to the entertainment business then? Yeah, what I used to do in England, um, I worked in an office for a long, long time, I was actually a civil servant and uh, in my spare time we used to have sort of lo local jam nights around the local pubs, you know, like they do, which is very popular in the UK and England. Uh, where people just go along, if you're a guitarist, you take your guitar along, you know, if you're a drummer, there's a drum kit set up for you. And of course they always want singers, because not all good guitarists are good singers, and uh, there were one or two songs in there that I heard people do, and I thought, yeah, I'd like to do that. So I got up and uh, made a good job of it, and people started to ask me whether I wanted to sing in bands. And it, uh, it sort of expanded really, you know, from there, from getting up and, and doing it. It's like a karaoke in a way, but it's God Jam Night, you know, a lot of people will be quite familiar you know what that is and it was a, an ideal opportunity for me to just get up and uh, and do it and not worry too much if you make a fool of yourself because it's just it's just fun you know you can do more or less you know what you want yeah. had you always known that you had a good voice then when you were younger um my, my mother always thought they had a good voice you know um when I was a kid, I used to sing along to a lot of the, the you know the uh, the records at the time on the radio that sort of thing and uh and then when you go to school, you know, the, the school are always desperate for people to sing in the choir. And, and the actual junior school and, and primary school where I was, uh, they were connected to a local church and they wanted uh, ever so many people to be choir boys and choir girls, you know, whatever. But uh, it wasn't always because uh, of your ability. It was more because they didn't have enough numbers, you know, to sing. So, uh, But it was just something that I, I, I just did. I think a lot of kids just like to sing, whether they can, at that time, whether they've got a lot of tone in their voice or not, they just sing because they enjoy it. And what you do now is you do um, easy listening type lounge work. Can I call it lounge work? In Vegas, they call it the, cab the cabaret, the lounge singer, you know what I mean, where they, where they do all this, this crooning sort of stuff. But to be honest, you have to play to what the hotel wants. Uh, and where I work at the moment at the Holiday Inn, uh, it's a lovely hotel. They take good care of me there. I, uh, 
I work uh, in the restaurant, uh, not actually cooking the food, but actually singing. Uh, and it's all easy listening songs, you know, while people are, uh, are, are dining. And my, my brief is really is to do, put some nice gentle uh, singing on and uh, try not to give them too much indigestion, you know, uh, through the songs. So when I was young, that would have been called a crooner. A crooner, yes. I, I, I suppose it would be, but it, it's, it's the songs that I do. There's a, there's a mixture of all types of, of, uh, of artists, but if you think of all the various... Uh, easy listening sort of songs, whether it's the old style, even some of the new songs like, you know, from Robbie Williams as well, I mean, the ballad, more ballad types. So you have to do some Frank Sinatra then, do you? Uh, well, yes, I mean, for me, uh, Frank's my favourite singer. I, I think uh, when I listen to Frank, I, I'm just amazed at the way he actually sounds. It's just that that tone of, of voice when he comes on, it's just, it's just amazing. For me, there's nobody sounds like Frank, you know, so I just... Uh, this hat on, you know, look, look alright, you know what I mean, that, that sort of thing, but there you go, so sometimes uh, I may occasionally do a Frank Sinatra show, even though I'm not a sound alike, but I'm told I, I do a, a pretty good job at doing some of his classic songs, and it's not only Frank Sinatra, it's Dean Martin, Michael Bublé, a great Canadian crooner as well, you know, he's, he's doing a lot of great stuff now, so you can do him as well, so So, would it be alright if we um, had a sneaky look around your apartment? You know what I worry about is that... You know, that look from me. But yes, no problem at all, you know. <laughs> come, come and follow me. I'll, I'll, I'll practice I'll that. It's my small kitchen here. Where I just... you, you've got nothing here that's going to scare kids, have you? No, not, nothing at all. No, you'll be okay. Come into my kitchen. It's a small one, but, you know, even I can do damage in there, you know, if I'm not careful. Come and have a look. Well, I'm all right for a cup of tea. Yeah, well, yeah tea, coffee, no problem. This is a uh, kitchen, and uh, you can see the view. You know, it's, it's, it's worse for you to have, you know, when you're that's washing the dishes. You have to yeah, after a hard day's toil, you know, in the kitchen, you can uh, relax and just uh, have a look, you know. And do they know the places where we go when we're grey and old? Cause I've been told that salvation Let's their wings unfold So when I'm lying in my bed Strange thoughts through my head Martin, thank you ever so... Oh, thank you for the cappuccino first. It's all right, 50 baht, though. Okay. Yeah, that's really cheap. I try to give her prices down. Right, well, it's been very nice of you to let us invade your privacy on what I know is a working day. Yes. And showing us around, and just thank you very much. We did it our way. Wherever it may take me, I know the life won't break me. When she comes to call, she won't forsake me. I'm loving angels instead. When I'm feeling weak, and my pain 